Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 24th, 2022, around 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new tropical system to be forming in the Atlantic Basin and the Caribbean over the next several days. We got a storm alert out there, so what do you need to know? Let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that we got a couple of things starting to happen today. First of all, starting from west to east, we do have a tropical wave being monitored by the National Hurricane Center. 20% chance of development over the next five days as this moves generally westward into the Caribbean. We are also watching a slew of potential tropical systems. We have this wave over here that will be emerging or will be merging with this wave over here. And these two will interact over the next several days. And some tropical cyclone formation is possible after that. If we look here at the NHC forecast this morning, we noticed that we have two discernible areas for tropical cyclone formation. First of all, this wave right now uh, approaching the Lesser Antilles in the Windward Islands right here. This will be moving into the Caribbean over the next several days and could go on to develop into a tropical cyclone as it approaches the island of Jamaica and south of the Dominican Republic and Hispaniola. And then we also have a new tropical disturbance out here. This is coming off the coast of Africa, like we just said. This will be moving and merging with a new with the additional tropical wave over here in the MDR, and some subsequent development out of that wave is possible thereafter. Now this lines up pretty nicely with our threat areas for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Again, some of these areas are under very high or high end risk impacts. And we can tell that this lines up very nicely with those areas that we highlighted just a few months ago. And so this plays into the overall threat areas. Now, again, some of these areas like Hispaniola, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and even Jamaica for that matter, remain under a high risk. And that will kind of be the way that it's going to play out for the next several months. I do suspect that the Caribbean will become a little bit more active as we head in through uh, the later part of September and into October for sure, as we would expect for that time of the year. So if we take a look here at the visible satellite imagery, we noticed that this morning we have uh, this disturbance right now in the central and western part of the Atlantic main development region. This is that area being highlighted right now by NHC. Right now, there's not really much going on with it. And again, we noticed that it's there's really no discernible features that are really out there right now. But we do notice what's happening though is overall we have this cold pool that's forming over South America because there's a large amount of cooler than normal temperatures across this area. And that is trying to spread out this cold pool, basically like this mini cold front into the Atlantic Basin. And that is actually going to help to increase convergence and increase rotation uh, with these tropical waves. And so this area needs to be monitored as it moves through into the Caribbean where some development subsequently after that is possible. Now out here in the eastern part of the main development region, again, we are watching these two tropical waves today. First of all, we've got a wave right here. This will be coming off the coast of Africa within the next about 24 hours or so. And then we've got this other system right here south of the Cabo Verde Islands, which also has uh, the potential to merge with this system. And after that, some subsequent development out of these systems is possible. Now, if we look at how this evolution could play out, let's turn to the GFS forecast. This is the 60 run uh, valid for 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. This is Thursday, August 25th here on the forecast model. We notice that we have this tropical wave right here. We were talking about this now approaching Barbados and the Lesser Antilles in the Windward Islands. So this will be something to monitor. Now, on the GFS forecast, this actually shows that development chances remain relatively low as it tries to traverse the Caribbean. We noticed that on the subsequent, on the previous runs there of the GFS forecast, there was actually a well-defined tropical cyclone here by the 27th of August, and that doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So the development, at least in the Caribbean, will probably be a little bit slower than what uh, some of the previous runs of the GFS have shown. But we also notice out here in the MDR, we have this big tropical wave, this big area of lower than average pressures across the deep tropics. Now we'll have to see if this is able to consolidate into anything. The models actually don't really call for much in the way of consolidation. And only finally out here in the very long range, this is by the 31st of August, do we actually have any tropical cyclones in the forecast model. 
And the problem with this is that the GFS has consistently been pushing back development, which means that development may actually not be so imminent as we once thought. But either way, we do have systems to watch. If we look at the GFS ensembles here, we notice that the GFS ensembles are pretty much in agreement with what we were talking about. Again, generally, by about the 30th of August, this is 144 hours here on the GFS ensembles. We notice that overall we have an area of lower than average pressures across the deep tropics. Some of these could be tropical systems, especially, and then we'll be watching that system in the Caribbean as well. The European ensembles, for that matter, the ZRZ European ensembles, do actually uh, pique a little bit of an interest with that Caribbean system because we notice that the uh, European ensembles, the, the ZRZ runs here, do actually call for some development of that system as it approaches Central America or the Yucatan Peninsula. And then we also have the potential for a system out here by the 30th of August out in the Central Atlantic at this point. Now, the uh, we don't have the uh, 060 runs in yet, um, but they'd be pretty much showing much of the same. That upper level wind environment, again, uh, generally going to be pretty favorable in the East Atlantic, but we'll be watching how this tut interacts here because this actually might create a fair bit amount of wind shear and not really allow things to develop. And we'll see how the Caribbean overall responds we'll see if we can get anything going down in that region as well now taking a look here at the southern united states flooding threat we've been talking about this for the past several days some very significant flooding is ongoing today across portions of louisiana uh, mississippi and parts of western alabama spreading into central alabama today uh, we've had some very significant rainfall totals here we can kind of zoom in a lot of flash flood warnings stretching all the way uh, from central mississippi down into portions of central louisiana another flash flood warning down here to the southwest of houston and some pretty significant rainfall to the south of san, uh, san angelo texas there uh, some of these rainfall amounts especially across portions of mississippi today uh, have been well into uh, the eight inch range and we can kind of zoom in here some of these rainfall totals are, are just absolutely crazy you can see some of them are indicating about uh, about six inches or so uh, so some very significant rainfall that certainly has occurred over the past couple of days you can see some seven inch rainfall totals there and going back then into louisiana uh, some six inch rainfall totals and then even into texas some five to six inch rain total so we're seeing a lot of heavy rainfall this is going to be spreading into central alabama during the day today we can already see some flash flood warnings uh, including places like Demopolis, Livingston, to the south of Etowah, uh, to the southwest of Tuscaloosa there. So we'll be watching for some very heavy rainfall if we actually uh, take off that and put on the actual radar here. We notice that a large uh, batch of heavy rain is moving through that area currently, and we still have additional rainfall across portions of Louisiana and Mississippi as well. So we'll be watching for the potential for, for some flooding off of that as well. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.